Hello! Today I want to do something a bit different, something I haven't done in quite a while, which is talk about two movies I purchased from Barnes & Noble uh, during a 50% off sale for films in the Criterion Collection. Now, I'm not going to go into any big uh, details with these movies, in fact, it's been a while since I've seen either of these films, so it'd be better if I, you know, maybe in the coming weeks, that I watch them again, uh, then I could maybe do individual videos about them. But you know, until then, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna just say something. I don't know what I'm gonna say, but I want to just make some sort of video. It's been a while since I talked about the Criterion Collection, so why not uh, do it again? Now the first movie is uh, 1984, uh, based off of a book by George Orwell, starring John Hurt, Richard Burton, and directed by Michael Radford, who also wrote the film. Basically, this uh, film is you known as Big Brother. <clears throat> That's how Big Brother really became quite a well-known term. Uh, essentially, government um, uh, controlling people. You do what the government says. The government is in your life. Sort of, you don't really have much freedom, and uh, the book and the film is, shows that what that kind of life would be. Um, now again, I haven't seen this in a long time, so uh, that might be very not be the greatest explanation of this film, but I hope to see this very soon, and um, I might have a double featured with it, with this, Blue Velvet, um, stars uh, Kyle MacLachlan and uh, Dennis Hopper, directed and written, directed by David Lynch. I think if there's any movie of David Lynch that I would say is my favorite, it, it's Blue Velvet. Um, it's such an interesting movie. It's it can be quite disturbing if you think, you know, because well, in a way, it actually is disturbing. Not necessarily it can be, though I say can because you know maybe some people might watch this, and it's like compared to some other movies, it might not be very disturbing at all. Uh, this was made in 1986, and um, yeah. Movies have, there have been more, you could say, more disturbing films made since then. Um, I did own this, another copy of the Blu-ray, but uh, there weren't as many special features compared to this set. Um, just... Looking here real quick, um, the only thing I can think of that I can't find on the back of here is there was a Rod a Siskel and Ebert review of the film that was a part of the 25th anniversary Blu-ray that I, no, I have, I also have, in addition to this. Um, but you can find that on the internet fairly easy. I believe YouTube has it. Um, so, you know, uh, outside of that, I think it has pretty much the other stuff that had, like documentaries and whatnot. Uh, and that's like the only thing that I can see that is not listed here. And if it is on here, you know, Probably to put the disc in and 
look at the features. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Got 1984, blue velvet. Might have a double feature. Um, this is 110 minutes. This is under 20, so two hours. And this is almost two hours. You know, maybe back to back sometime in the week. Um, obviously, I'm filming this way before uh, you'll be able to see it. Um, but, you know, just want to do a little update regarding the Criterion Collection. I haven't done one of those in quite some time, so why not? Uh, I don't know what I'll do next week. Uh, I was thinking about doing more Tarantino stuff. But, you know, if I watch these films, and I really want to talk about one of them, I might do that instead. But I do hope to discuss more Tarantino stuff. Uh, since I did sort of a brief overview of his filmography, and then talked about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood last week, um, yeah, I might talk about some of the films he just wrote first that I own. Race credit with writing and didn't direct. And then get into the stuff he wrote and directed. Um, but yeah. Uh, so I'm real happy. Uh, I never owned this film before. Um, I had seen it before. Uh, but I never owned it. You know, it was most like on TV and stuff. Did own this. But I'm happy to have this edition now. Uh, so I'm happy. I would have loved to have gotten another film or so, but, you know, uh, the Criterion Collection, you know, uh, new releases are often like $40 because there's a lot of care and put into uh, either restoration of the film and there was a lot of special features and stuff about the movie, like documentaries and stuff. Maybe other releases had and didn't have. Make it the best picture and sound quality the movie can have and be. So there's a lot of care taken into <clears throat> films of the Criterion Collection. Um, so in a way, it sort of makes sense of why there are they can be fairly pricey, and also Barnes & Noble can be at times a bit, they can jack the price up a bit more than normal, uh, if there is any critique or complaint I think I could have, or anyone could have with Barnes & Noble, it's that, they sometimes make uh, prices regarding either movies or books or music or stuff like that. Sometimes they tend to make the price a bit higher than normal. Um, not sure why. You know, Barnes & Noble is still one of the biggest bookstores there are. A lot of people enjoy going there. They love going online. I don't know. Um, that's part of what they do. Um, but, you know... I guess it is what it is, but still, uh, hopefully in the future, near future, I shall talk a bit more about these, and, um, yeah, be it beginning next week or many weeks from now, um, yeah, that said, I hope you all have a good day, hope you all have a great week. A great weekend as well. <clears throat> Until next time, see you all next. I'll see you all next time. Until then, yeah, I'm getting confused now.